That's the sound of me opening up a Coke because I'm getting tired of recording this. Anyways, it's raining outside. Just a forewarning, if you hear a lot of rain, I am so sorry. But this hasn't really let up for a while, and I don't think there's much around that. Anyways, let's continue. So, we're playing Cry of Fear today. I'd like to give a bit of a primer on that first, then we'll actually start playing. So first up, Cry of Fear is a horror... first-person horror survival game. You can get it on Steam. It was released back in 2011 as a mod by Rumpel or Andreas Ronberg. God, I'm probably butchering that name. I am so fucking sorry. That being said, um, there are differences between the mod, you may have played it a few years back, and the standalone. Majoritively, they're the same. However, the standalone boasts improved AI and some slight changes to the models and animations, from what I can tell. Um, it's been a while, so don't count me on <laughs> any kind of changes for the animations. I'm not 100% sure on that. That being said, uh, the main reason the standalone even got changed was because there was still a lot of uh, assets left over in the files that belonged to Valve. Because Cry of Fear runs on the Gold Source engine. For those of you who don't know what that is, that is the engine that Half Life 1 runs on from 1998. It's a pretty old engine, especially for a game being released in 2011. However, I don't feel like that really takes away from the experience, at least from my perspective. And I'm a person who likes coding and modding and all of that stuff, so I'm a little biased here. But to me, that makes it a lot more interesting. Um, there's a lot of effort and care that goes into working on an engine that old. You have to really work within its limitations. Uh, anyways, back to Gold Source in specific. Gold Source being released in 1998 was actually based off of Quake's engine, which was released in 1996. There are some key differences. For example, Gold Source's AI for Half-Life 1 was completely rewritten from the ground up, and there's some other modifications which has branched Golden Source from the Quake engine significant. The Quake engine, while not a direct successor, or a direct sequel to um, Doom, Doom's engine from 1993, it does use some similar code as far as I know, but a big difference between Doom and Quake is that Doom was fake 3D, supposedly. You can look that up, by the way. There's a lot of stuff about fake 3D. Um, but basically, the gist of it is it's it's pseudo 3D. It's taking an environment that is technically speaking two-dimensional and displaying it in a 3D way. Look at Wolfenstein uh, 3D from 92. I'm probably wrong on that date. Um, while Quake is completely 3D and one is, was one of the first games to feature true 3D, that being said, the Gold Source engine is incredibly dated, and it will show, but it still does work out for Cry of Fear, I feel. Um, that being said, let's begin. Alright, so let's begin. Here we are, Cry of Fear. I was having some technical difficulties with my recording software. But here we are, this is the main menu. Um, there is actually a co-op campaign that I probably will get somebody to play. Uh, anyways, for those people who are watching, welcome. Hi, Nib. Hi, Brandon. You guys, I hope you guys are watching. But I would have forced you to play co-op Cry of Fear. Actually, probably be a lot of fun. Anyway, so let's just go ahead and get this show started. I am actually going to start on medium because I'm probably really bad at this game. It's been about two years since I played it. felt alone my whole life for as long as I can remember I don't know if I like it or, or if I'm just used to it but I do know this being lonely does things to you and feeling shit and bitter and angry all the time just eats away at you
So just an FYI, I'm gonna probably be muting my mic during uh, important scenes, just to let you hear it. Um, to be honest, this intro scene isn't all that important. But uh, the story here does get incredibly depressing. Now there's Rumble. Um, so it's kind of just a warning, but I do think it is an enjoyable story too. Uh, it's actually one from back when I originally played this kind of hit home quite a bit, and I think in some ways it still does. Um, it just means something different to me now. Now I believe, um, I usually don't remember the voice actor, uh, voice actor's name for the main character, our protagonist here, Simon. He does some pretty good work, and for horror games, I mean, considering what we have to work with, it's probably some of the best. Now, I say that would we also have things like Resident Evil and Silent Hill 1 and 2's uh, atrocious voice acting. Now, don't get me wrong, I am a huge horror fanatic, so I love Resident Evil 1 and 2, both the Silent Hill games, both first two Silent Hill games. I actually like the third, but it's been a long time. Um, if you ask me about Homecoming, I'm gonna spit in your face, so don't ask me about Homecoming. Uh, also, as a note, this game does take place in Sweden, where Rumble is from, and there's some things you might recognize, too. There's some locations that are specifically um, based off of real-life locations. Uh, a park in specific you'll see later. Now, this is still a fictional game by all means. Hey, look, it's not cool. I'm gonna spend way too much time looking at these posters, by the way. Here we are, in the beginning of the game. You know, fun thing about the, the standalone of the mod, I, I played the mod, I definitely remember this was different. The intro is only slightly edited, and <laughs> the main thing about it is the stupid fucking blur effect. It's incredibly infuriating in my opinion, because it's just annoying. Like, really annoying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, that's like picture. Like two to be exact. Oh, and just to be contrarian, I like half like one more than two. Fuck you guys. <laughs> I actually can't read that. I can't tell if it's gibberish or if it's just another language. Oh well. Gotta take some pictures, so that's that's not very nice. This intro cinematic's always been really weird to me, and I actually I feel like it doesn't make much more sense 
even later. Oh shit. I'm gonna just scare myself more than this game is probably gonna scare me. I'm just got nothing. You know, I wish I had a fucking camera like this. I could just just take pictures and boom, there's a door. This would be awesome. Except I'd probably have the exact same experience here as Simon, because my brain's all sorts of fucked up. If it read off your subconscious and made the first thing you were thinking about, oh god. What the fuck? Come on. There you go. This game's physics are a bit wonky, but I mean, it's fucking gold source. Hello, Simon. Fuck you, Simon. No, that's a door. I don't want to use a door yet. Yeah. I say that a lot. Oh shit, I never noticed that the door fucking disappears. That's that's awesome. I played this game seven times in a row. Well not a row, but seven times total. I've actually done a speedrun on this too. I shame I never uploaded it. <coughs> that still always manages to surprise me just a little bit. Like less and less each time, but Man, those quality models. Clipping How and everything. did I get here? I really had to give Rotten Bull props though, because this looks way better than Half-Life 1 did, that's for sure. Hmm. You know, he says no phone credit, but I... I don't know if it works differently over there in Sweden or not, but it just kind of confuses me if this is in like fucking 1999 or... What? I don't remember the last time I had a phone that had a credit, uh, credit on it. Either that or he goes through his minutes very quickly. 